So, Karen, first of all, again, thank you very much for being with us in this journey. We are very excited to share your knowledge and, of course, your kindness to our world here, to Brazilian people. So it's a great opportunity to have you here. Well, thank you. And as always, thank you for inviting me and including me. There's nothing that could make me more happy. That, that's a great uh, opportunity for us, for sure. Uh, Carrie, you know that this, this meeting uh, this year has a different purpose. We are focused on talk about diversity, uh, about uh, uh, innovation and all these things that makes the business survive, you know, make uh, uh, we become more prepared for the next step. Last Keep Summit, you, you talked about the women in Lean and we get very excited with it. You know, we, we get very interested about to know more about this project and I'd like, just for a start, I'd like to you share with us about this project and this proposal. Well, thank you. And thank you so much for asking. And Women in Lean, Our Table, is a project that I started almost two years ago with my friends, Dorsey Sherman and Crystal Davis. And one of the things I noticed as I was traveling around speaking and teaching, I would be at conferences, I would be the only woman speaker. And I would look out into the audience and at least 50% of the participants were women. And I thought, why aren't more women speaking? Why aren't more women writing? And you know, when I see a problem, I think somebody should do something and the someone is me. So my friends Crystal and Dorsey and I started Women in Lean Our Table. And our purpose is to raise the voices of women in lean, to help women become better influencers, better writers, better speakers, to become better practitioners. And to, almost two years ago, we started with about 20 women. And we now have 850 women from around the world working together to help each other. We have two rules only in our group. The first is be kind. And the second is all help is offered for free. So we encourage women from all over the world to join us. You will find a community where you have a seat at the table, where your voice is heard, and when, where we're going to help you raise your voice so you can accomplish what it is that you want to accomplish, not only in Lean, but in your life. 850 women around the world, and uh, there are two, two, two rules, so that, as you said, uh, the first one to be kind, and the second one to make it free, is that right? That's exactly it, because there are many more things important in life than money. And we want to make sure that there's no barrier to any woman who wants to join to be able to get the help that they need. And uh, we have also a, uh, we have many, we call them tables of women who form together for their own interests. And we have women in Lean Latinas. So it's a table for Spanish and Portuguese speaking women. So even if you don't speak English perfectly, please join us because we're going to help you in whatever language you want to speak. Yeah, I, and I can say for Brazilian people that if you don't speak English very well, you can talk with Karen in Portuguese, all right? <laughs> I know that... I will do my best, absolutely. I love Portuguese. Great, that's great. Karen, uh, where, where can we found, find more about Women in Lean? Is there a website or something like this? Yes, you can visit us. Actually, the best place is on LinkedIn, Women in Lean, our table, or the other thing on LinkedIn, just connect with me and uh, send me a message that you are interested in Women in Lean, our table, and we will get you started. You'll get information from Dorsey Sherman about all our different activities and how you can join our online get-togethers. And we also have a new member coordinator and Anne Freeman will reach out to you and help you uh, get all acclimated. We want to make sure that all of our new members feel invited and cared for. So just reach out to me and we'll get you all set up. Nowadays, we know that uh, it's increasing more and more women on the leadership position. Uh, what the effect on, of, of this on the business results? All right. If you have more women in leadership positions, you are going to find better business results. Not only better business results, but 
better results in general. So let me first talk a little bit about this terrible COVID-19 pandemic that we are all uh, have been suffering under for almost two years already. And I want you to think about the countries who've actually had the best results in um, you know, stopping the COVID and having uh, the best results for the people, citizens of their countries. And those countries have been led by women. <laughs> New Zealand with Jacinda Ardern, and also Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Germany, Slovakia, all women leaders. And the reason that women leaders actually can produce better results in business and for people is that they're not focused only on the end results. They're focused on the means, on people. And as we all know in Lean, the results are only uh, uh, they're, they're just from the, they're, they're, they're a result, the ends are a result of the process. So if you want better results, you actually have to create a better process. You have to focus on the process. How we get there is just as or more important than where we're going. Women are collaborative, they're cooperative in leadership, they're interested in asking questions and listening to the answers. There, we're very good at bringing people together, like as we see in Women in Lean, our table, bringing people together to figure out what to do as a community, how we can best help. So when you see women leaders, you're going to see better business results because we're going to be focusing not just on the process and on tools, but on the people who do those processes. Better processes always uh, are better results. And uh, for a leader, what kind of strategies you can use to encourage the growth of women on leadership? Okay, so I'm going to suggest there are two different things here. First of all, if you're a man in a leadership position, <laughs> the important thing is to look around. Look around and see how many women you have in your company. And then look at your leadership team and see. Is that percentage of women reflected in leadership or is the only woman leader we have in HR because that's the part of the company that deals with people? If you see that we don't have a similar percentage to the women who work in our company, to the women who are in the population of our country, then what you have to do is decide that I'm going to make a change and I'm going to look for the women in this organization who need help and pull them up. It's not only that we can say, okay, women, you need to speak up. You need to do something. You need to solve the problem. We need to work on this two ways. So if you're a man in a leadership position, look around you, open up your eyes, understand that what we need for the future is creativity and diversity and pull up those women. If you're a woman, here's the second thing. Raise your voice. Speak up. Apply for jobs within your organization that maybe you look at the job description and 20 things you have experience and are qualified for and one thing you don't. Oftentimes women say, oh, well, but I don't have this experience. I don't know this. So they don't apply. Well, actually, <laughs> you can apply and you can learn that one thing. So women speak up, apply for jobs. and men. Pull up the women. We have to work together to solve this problem. We separate here some students' questions. The first question is from Mariana Antunes from Juiz de Fora, and she asked, uh, what would, would be the first steps for a woman to start her career in Lean? Okay, that is a fabulous question, and really, I love it that we always have the student questions. Okay, the first thing I'm going to suggest to start your career in Lean is to join Women in Lean, our table, and find yourself. We will help you find a mentor to help you because you can learn tools and principles and practices. You can read books. You can take courses. But the best thing is to have a coach and a mentor and a helper. So join Women in Lean, our table. Next, we will. I will say read books. Find, uh, take courses so you can learn the tools. And the third thing is what I always say, practice, 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 because we learn by doing. 
even if you aren't working in a lean job at the moment, you can practice at home. We have we have processes all over. So that would be the three steps that I would suggest. Great. You know, I need to do this. You know, if you have to learn, <laughs> if you want to learn about lean and you are for women or if you are men, you know, you can look for this book, which Karen Ross is one of the authors. And it's one of the best sellers and uh, the one of benchmarks of this lean environment, lean culture. All right. And uh, Karen, let's go to the second question. Uh, it's from Santos Dumont, Raquel Moraes. Uh, please give a tip to overcome the cultural resistance and stand out in a sexist scenario. Okay, here is my most important tip. Be yourself. This is absolutely the most important thing. I worked in many corporate uh, or corporate in, you know, multinational organizations. And look at me. I have big tattoos. I have funky glasses. I wear all these bracelets. And I have, uh, you know, crazy nail polish. Be yourself because what stands out is who you are. Speak your mind, speak your truth, and be yourself. That is absolutely the most important thing. Be direct. Say what you think because that is what other people are going to respect and they're going to listen to and they're going to understand and you're going to stand out for who you are. Don't try to be anyone else that you are. Don't try to be a man. Be yourself. Yeah, yeah. That's really important. And the last question, the last student's questions, because I have the, the finish one, the, the final question. And uh, the, the last student's question is from Leticia Lispector from Vissosa. And she asks, Karen, please tell me more about your up, upcoming books and project. You inspire me. That is so super nice. I have a new book coming out called The Kind Leader, a practical guide to eliminating fear, creating trust, and leading with kindness. And that will be out September 10th. You can pre-order it now from the publisher Routledge or on Amazon.com. And I'm super excited about that because reading books is good. But if you really want to learn how to do something, you should have a coach and a teacher. I started the new school for kind leaders and actually we're giving classes to people to learn to lead with kindness and you can find us on LinkedIn again at the new school for kind leaders. I have a talk show called the little kind words talk show on LinkedIn and on YouTube and every week or so I invite on a guest and we talk about a uh, new Uh, uh, kind word because kind words make a huge positive impact. And I also actually for my foundation, the Love and Kindness Project Foundation, we've just published a new book called The Fox Continuous Improvement Team. Everyone can create better ways to work. And it's about how to help people with all different physical, mental and intellectual limitations learn how to do continuous improvement. So Always something new and exciting happening over here. That's great. Well, I have one more to say to Brazilian people. You know, I will update them. And uh, this semester, we will start with Karen Ross, the culture of excellence. And they will talk a lot about diversity, women, and a lot of, a lot of these things. It will be a great opportunity. So if you want to know more, keep in touch with our social media that you will get this. It's really great to talk with you, but we have to uh, finally uh, question. Uh, I wonder uh, where should be our effort, of course, in your opinion, where should be our effort to develop the market of the future now? This is such an amazing and important question because, you know, I talk a lot about creativity as well as lean and about creating for the future, not just solving problems in the past. And I think the most important markets we should be looking at are things that have to do with purpose. We have a terrible worldwide crisis in global warming. Look at all of the heat domes and all of the, the tornado. We had a tornado in my town. So we really need to look for uh, markets that are for clean energy. We also need to look for markets that will bring equality to the world. 
So how we can feed everyone in the world, how we can make sure everyone in the world has clean water and good sanitation, housing for everyone. So all of those things that are global that have to do with purpose should be the markets of the future and especially anything that has to do with this climate emergency that we are all living in. Yeah, yeah, that's really important because I believe that uh, when you focus on purpose, you you engage more people, all right? And we know that people is one of the most important resource of a company. So that's why it's really important. And uh, to think in a to think together, all right? Everything is together, and you have to find a solution together. And without the impacts, you know, everything. Okay, students, everyone, please remember. The most important thing is to be yourself, speak in your own voice, make the contribution that you need to make, because it isn't only about you will be satisfied and happy in your life. If you don't speak in your own voice, be yourself and make the contribution that you're supposed to make and fulfill your purpose, others in the world will be missing something. So be kind, be yourself and fulfill your purpose. Thank you very much, Karen. Bye-bye. Hugs, Brazilian hugs and kisses for you. See you. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao.